There are so many different kinds of melons out there and all of them are terrific. Here are the three that we find primarily in use in, in most homes in Oklahoma. The watermelon, which is always terrific, the cantaloupe, and the honeydew melon. Now, the thing that you must remember to do with every single one of them after you bring them in from the garden, in from the store, in from the farmer's market, it is essential that you take each of these melons, put them in a sink, and get a scrub brush and scrub them down. If you look at the cantaloupe, for instance, you can see that the, the skin is very rough and there's a lot of microbial activity that can be going on within those cracks and crevices. But even a smooth skin melon like this one can have a lot of microorganisms on here and when you cut a knife clear through it, it pulls those microorganisms into the fruit itself that you're going to eat. We had a big outbreak this spring with melons that were imported, cantaloupe that were imported from Honduras that had salmonella. And the, the probability of uh, reducing, or the, at least the potential for reducing risk exists if folks will really clean the melons before they start. So that's step one. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on this. We'll talk a little bit about how to choose one melon over another, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and get the dressing started. I'm making a melon salad. So I've got two tablespoons of fresh lime juice and one and a half teaspoons to two teaspoons. You may want to taste your melon and find out how sweet it is. This is sugar. You could use an artificial sweetener on here as well, um, but a little bit of sugar helps uh, counteract the acidity we've just added with the, with the lime juice. So you want to stir that around good enough to get that fairly well dissolved. And then I've pinched out, uh, see if I can pinch it out again, uh, just a small amount of salt. So depending on what the sodium restrictions are in your diet, I would go ahead and add this. The reason for the salt is that it actually enhances the sweetness of the melon. If you have a melon that's not very sweet, it wasn't quite as ripe as you'd had hoped it had been, uh, adding just a smidgen of salt to it can really bring out the sweetness that's there and make it a lot more tasty. So we've got this ready to go. And the next phase for us is to take uh, one and a half cups of cubed watermelon. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect squares by any means. In fact, a little bit of uh, naturalness to it is probably for the best. You could make melon balls if you wanted to. We're going to put those in a big bowl so we can mix them together. I've got one cup of honeydew melon and uh, one cup of cantaloupe. And again, melon balls, or maybe you get some in cubes and some in balls, and, and some uh, in triangles would be kind of fun. And we're simply going to stir the, the little dressing that we had over the top of those and mix those gently together. Now, if you've got time, uh, giving them, oh, 10 to 30 minutes uh, for the juices to start coming out of the melon because they're going to start coming out with that sugar and salt and, and uh, lemon juice that you've added. We'll give it a little bit of time for the flavors to uh, develop uh, and, and be even more tasty. Now when you're choosing the melons that you're going to look at, each one has its own peculiarities uh, as far as what you're going to look for. With the watermelon, you want it to be smooth on the surface. You want to, in some parts of the country, they sell it with a pigtail, and so you want that to be well attached, but in Oklahoma, that's usually gone. What we really look for is this yellow or buttery spot on the bottom. Uh, in, in order for the melon to be, uh, when it ripens, this will change from white to a yellow or a buttery color. Uh, you're not going to get much from smooth from them, but if, if, if some people will use the thumping method, uh, and by thumping, some people will tap it like that, some people will actually knock on it like wood. Uh, it should be sort of a, a thud. If it rings, if it's more of a ringing sound, you kind of need to be a little bit of a music major to do this. But if you get a ringing sound, that means there's not as much moisture in this melon and it's not fully ripe. Uh, the best way, of course, is going to be to plug it. Uh, which of course is going to ruin the melon for anybody else if you didn't like this one. So it's not going to be used more, very often, but those are the, the things that you're going to look for. With cantaloupe, you're going to look at it and you can see that you get the, the netting in the foreground and in the background, uh, there's a base color. In this case, it's golden. You either want it to be golden or orange. Uh, it's not probably going to be perfect if you spin it around on some, on many melons, you're going to find some like right here where it's a little bit more green, but you want the bulk of that background color to be yellow were golden. Uh, shaking a, a cantaloupe tells you really nothing. Sometimes you'll get a rattle when it's ripe, most often nothing. Uh, what you really want to test for though is the smell because that's going to be one of the, the things that's definitely going to be a clue for you. You're also going to want to push gently, not on the stem end, but the end opposite the stem, and there should be a little bit of give there because that's where it's going to ripen first. You can do the same thing with a honeydew. Here you want it to be creamy colored uh, to yellowy not green. And you can see you do have some of that netting on here, but it's not as pronounced. If it's underripe, the netting will be more pronounced and, and whiter. 
The big thing on a honeydew, which is the sweetest melon, is going to be the aroma. That's just going to come and knock you over when they get really ripe. Put them in, in your house at room temperature for a couple of days, but remember they're not going to get any sweeter. They will get softer, but not any sweeter than when you collected them from the market. This salad is pretty much ready. Once you get that cutting done, uh, you're ready to go. So we're going to do the last step here, which is to sprinkle in and mix in about a tablespoon of fresh mint that you've chopped up fairly well, uh, almost to the point of mincing, if you'd like. And this is ready. This is a great salad. It mixes all kinds of summery flavors. If it's not quite summer, if it's into fall, it can bring a lot of the, the summer back to you. So I strongly recommend this one. Put a little bit of a mint garnish on there and you have a terrific salad.